Is it seriously 9.16 already? I need to go. I'm I'm late. I was supposed to leave an hour. I'm going to take this coffee to go. All right, let's pour it into my thermos. Perfect. First try. Push to start. What's up, guys? It's Danny, and today I'm driving to Bricks and Minifigs. I'm going to be picking up Emily along the way, and then we're going to an IMAX theater to see Rogue One, which is so cool because it's in preparation for the new Andor show coming out September 21st, and I never got to see it in theaters. Plus, I haven't seen an IMAX movie for probably 10 years, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, I've still got quite a bit of driving left to do, but fortunately, I've got some coffee to help get through the drive, so. But yeah, my coffee montage this morning took a little bit longer than expected, so I am about an hour behind schedule. But no worries, no worries. <laughs> I'll just drive fast. All right, so we're going to this bubble tea place and we're just gonna grab some bubble cake here. <laughs> so massive. Boba, yum. Mm. That's really good boba. This is a cafe. Are you serious right now? <laughs> There's side dishes at a cafe. That bubble was so good though. I haven't had it for a long time. But now we're headed off to Bricks and Mini Figs. Oh, I almost just ran into that car. We made it. We're at Bricks and Mini Figs. Hopefully they have stuff. Any indication of what they have should be okay. Pull. Got some retail sets. Ooh, look at this. Cloth Echo Based. You don't see that every day. We got some of the new ATSTs that are super, super, super overpriced. Looks like they just have like a couple dollar markup on these. They have a viewing down there. 45 bucks for some Horn Company Troopers. That's actually not too bad. It's the foil bag Razor Crest. Better than the actual microfighter that came out. And $10 markup on some ATTEs. That saved me a trip. So we're out of stock right now. Oh, this is cool. Iconic Saber. Is this supposed to be the dark saber? They have all these different customs. Vader and Master Shoto, Ahsoka, a hundred bucks for these, and then only uh, forty for Luke's saber. Got some General Grievous's and a Magna Guard. Oh, we got a white Boba in there. Oh, dang! Three hundred on the sassy Django. Not a bad price on this guy. Oh, there's customs down here. I think I could. Sheesh. Pog Crow. Huh, interesting. You can like mount this on your wall. Oh. We made it to the AMC, and I kid you not, this place looks abandoned. <laughs> But this is the IMAX that they're playing Rogue One in. And there's a shooting range over there. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. Promo posters? Heck yeah. These are lit. I'm pretty pumped about this. Okay, day changed. We're getting some popcorn and maybe some freaking cinnamon bites or something. Oh my gosh. Popcorn acquired. What is this TV? But more importantly, is that a gonk droid? A few moments later. Is this thing on? Oops. Why is it always zoomed in? Is this a good angle? Um, so, so like, so I was thinking like, so I just made it back home, you know, after we got done with the movie and stuff, it was dark out and I didn't want to talk about it in the theater. I was crying. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, what? I'm not, I'm not entirely kidding. I think it just works better if I hold it. My arm won't even get tired or anything. It's fine, guys. It's fine. Guys, real talk. Okay. We got to talk about Rogue One how good this movie is like watching it in IMAX with surround sound and a massive screen definitely like helped right but the pacing in this movie is so good where everything is meaningful and it just moves right along for example when they're talking to Saul Guerrero on Jedha and she's finding all the stuff out having the whole revelation of her father planting this you know flaw in the Death Star while the freaking city is getting destroyed. There's just no time for any any lollygagging. No time for them to just like be wasting time on screen. But then at the same time, it doesn't feel rushed where they're just planet hopping and like literally hyperspace skipping from place to place that you don't, you don't even have time to get context. Let's talk real quick. Sneak peek from the Andor show. There was a good five or six minutes of one of the episodes, I wanna say episode one, where they showed Andor and Luthen Real, and he's like recruiting him and like telling him that he knows who he is, like he looked up 
his profile like he, he looked up his profile on on facebook so he knows all that it all of his history he like knows that he has been stealing from the empire for years and like since he was six years old so i was like oh the kid in that first shot when the imperial star destroyer is going overhead that's that's him when he's a kid they say they cover a five-year time period though which is kind of confusing because it's supposed to be five years before rogue one but then do they mean like they're covering the time up into rogue one like i wonder if they're starting at this point and then season two and maybe even season three are going to go all the way up to the events of rogue one and maybe even like connect the dots of why they find out who Jin Erso is and like how they tracked her to Wobani on that prison camp and stuff. So I don't know. A lot of cool stuff there. I think that Andor is going to be very good. Um, production value already. It's massive. They're on location. Uh, the choreography feels so much more fluid. Um, the stakes are high. The characters are so so much more serious about what's happening. There isn't just like, you know, quirky comedy that takes you out of the moment to give you, uh, you know, comedy relief. Uh, just the interaction already from that sneak peek into the trailer and the, you know, the gunshots too. Like, I think it was partially just because the IMAX and the sound quality, but it sounded like they were really hitting and um, like they could very much die at any time. And that's what they said they were going for is to make something that feels real. Something that, you know, is, is got more grit to it. It's dirty. It's not gonna be just like a clean set that they created just for the shot but it's very much like in action it's being used it's um you know it's the rise of the rebellion but yeah i didn't buy anything at bricks and minifigs but the store was kind of small but yeah not a whole lot really caught my eye so i didn't end up purchasing anything not to say that the shop's bad not at all it's just like i just nothing caught my eye so i i've been to three different bricks and minifigs around here and have struck out at all three. I haven't really found anything of interest. So I think I'm going to need to take a trip down south because that seems to be where it's at. Um, but yeah, I do have a couple of packages that arrived today. So let's get out of this car. I've been in here way too long and let's go see what packages arrived for me today. Just grab these. Okay, I'm upstairs now. I just opened this up here just in time. I got another Bail Organa and I got the Light Up Vader. Um, the light still works, but the battery needs changed. And then this is the, um, the Grand Inquisitor. He's all wrapped up in bubble wrap in there. Let me get that out. There he is. Um, I got these three figures from Blackwell Bricks. So shout out to him for having some claims on his Instagram. I was able to pick up these guys. So I do have a Bale Organa already, which I have in here in the back right corner. I just don't have enough minifigures, so I really need to get on that. I've got another package and oh, I'm so excited about this one. This is hard to get out. A sealed Z95 Headhunter. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Um, I will be opening this up for review. So in this one, we get a 501st uh, clone and then a 501st clone pilot and then Pong Krell. Oh my gosh, absolutely hate this guy. Such a menace, but then also such a cool minifigure. He's worth like 80 bucks alone. This set, I believe, um, goes for about 230 to 250 and uh, somebody actually sent me this. So thank you so much to Donnie for sending me the set for a review. I'm super excited to have this into the collection and also to have these figures. It's pretty epic. Here's the back of the box. And what's so cool is that it includes one of these old style missiles um, that you can actually hurt people with because they fire pretty hard. <laughs> and apparently it has jet thrusters that really work. So uh, <laughs> you see this guy right here? I didn't just buy him. I actually bought the entire set used. <laughs> I got it for 190, which I don't think is terrible. All the pieces are here, but most importantly, the figs and the Rancor because the Rancor alone is somehow going for like $120, which is crazy. But yeah, it's got all of his claws. So it includes the Gamorrean guard and he's in really good condition. He even has some hair on the pitchfork, I think. I hope that's my hair, but I don't think it is. And then, <laughs> why is Luke's head stuck in a bucket? He's kind of generic. He was in a bunch of other sets, so he's not worth a whole lot, but nonetheless, that's the Luke Skywalker. Oh my gosh, this poor guy. He just witnessed the rancor that he raised die. This set also includes like a skeleton and a chicken leg and a key and some fun things in there. <laughs> as it should be. Now, more exciting than that, I know, how can it get more exciting than that, is this mixed lot that I purchased. Um, I'll let you look at some of these pieces in here. Oh, okay, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Um, so I paid $112 for this mixed lot. There's supposedly some parts of the Wookiee catamaran, but most importantly, check this out. A Luminara light-up fig. Now, of course, it doesn't work, 
but I know how to change out the batteries and you just remove the arm and then push the back plate out. So I'm gonna do that here next. And then I've got the Mace Windu light up figure and his cape is in like perfect condition and you cannot change the cape because you cannot remove the head on these guys. I feel like freaking Thanos collecting all five light ups. That's looking pretty dusty. What in God's name happened to this walking stick? What is this? This is kind of, this is kind of neat. Oh my God. These were like the Rakashi or something. What is this ridiculousness? A motocross helmet. And I found another survivor. We got um, Chad. <laughs> Okay, I just got all of that washed and now it's gonna be laid out to dry for a couple of days because it takes forever for the water to actually evaporate from all the studs and pipes and stuff. So we'll just leave that there, let the gunship and the ATT watch over all of it. And meanwhile, um, let's go change out the batteries on those minifigs. Okay, hopefully I don't bust his arm off. Well, um, it's the next day, as you can tell, and it is already late into the afternoon because today is Sunday, and so we had sailing this morning, but before we went sailing, we actually went for a super early morning surf sash. Now, I'm finally resuming my project that I started last night, which is getting all of this stuff sorted out, which is all washed and dried now, and I was putting in the new batteries and the light-up figures, and unfortunately, I cannot get Luminara to light up, which is so sad, because her name, Luminara, literally sounds like to illuminate and she won't illuminate. And I'm asking a friend if he can help me fix it or if there's any hope for it. Otherwise, I only have one of the two light up figures that would actually make this lot super worth it. But if I can part out the Wookiee Catamaran, which also includes this Swamp Speeder, and then, you know, I've got some parts to like Anakin's Jedi Starfighter and like the Clone Walker and like a Hyena Bomber or something. Um, we'll see how much of that I can actually get built and maybe even using my own parts collection and hopefully actually put something together here. So let's do it. Let's take all this upstairs and let me show you what's in here. There's, I got so many full sets out of this. Check this out. Okay, so here's what that hunk of garbage got me. I have complete sets here from 2005 and some figures from the clone turbo tank. So I have the jet trooper, I have the light up mace window, and I was able to successfully change out the batteries. So this lights up perfectly. And that right there, my friends, is the entire value of the lot. And I also have the speeder bike here from the clone turbo tank set as well with the phase two OG trooper. So with these two battle droids and this gun, the only figures that I'm missing from the clone turbo tank now are just the Kashyyyk trooper, which I actually have one. And then that uh, original phase two commander Cody with the pauldron, which I actually had just sold one. So almost have all the side builds. Oh, and there's also this turret right here that apparently goes inside the 2005 clone turbo tank. So I have like all the side builds. I have the turret, I have the speeder bike, the jet trooper, the droids, and the mace windu, which is an absolute win just from that haul alone that pays for it. But then I have this clone walker, from 2005, which is supposed to have a phase two reconnaissance trooper on top of it, 100% complete right there. And then I also have the Anakin's Jedi interceptor along with the vulture droid, also 100% complete with the minifigure. And then this right here, the entire Wookiee catamaran with the swamp speeder, complete. I had to improvise on a few pieces, but less than 10 pieces are missing. This is 100% complete right now, but this little piece right here is kind of damaged. And then it's got all four figures. And um, the only issue is that I couldn't get Luminara to light up. So that is a serious bummer for me because I was hoping I'd have all five light up figures after this, but this catamaran looks really cool. This was not a set I was planning on picking up. So to get it in a mixed lot like this with a bunch of other 2005 sets was seriously so fun. It was like an Easter egg trying to build these things and figure out what I had, then look up the instructions, and then figure out like 
wow, I have actually so many of the pieces. I only had to use a few from my own parts collection. So yeah, that was really exciting and a big win. I also finished building BD and uh, the ambush on Ferrix on stream last night. This is actually like a very interesting set. It's very well built. Um, I feel like it's a very good play set. It just looks a little bit funky in terms of Star Wars vehicles, but yeah, I feel pretty accomplished this weekend. Actually got through quite a bit of Lego stuff and now I have this vlog that I can release to you guys. So make sure you like the video and subscribe for lots more Lego Star Wars news, build reviews and shopping hauls. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite part of this video was and if you wanna see more vlog content like this. And until next time guys, happy building.